So this patient's coming in for removal of a lesion that's on the left side of his neck. Um, now he's had a lot of sun exposure, so we've already done a number of cases where he's had um, squamous cell cancers, basal cell cancers. Um, just before I freeze this up, you can see there's more vascular component that's here. This area has a pearlescent quality to it, so I get a little bit nervous with this from a basal cell cancer perspective. I think likely this is this this is going to be one of the other basal cell or, or a squamous cell. If I had to lean, I'd lean a little bit more towards basal cell cancer. But I just wanted to show you this before I freeze it. Now the other issue here is from a biopsy perspective, and this is where you have to make decisions. Uh, normally, if I do a punch biopsy, I want to punch biopsy around normal tissue and abnormal tissue. But here, because of where it's at and vessels that are underneath, um, I'm going to freeze it and do more of a shave biopsy and send that off, and then see if we can cauterize it and. And this plastic tissue or anaplastic tissue, it doesn't cauterize quite as well. And, and you might see that when we try to cauterize it. So for now, I'm just going to freeze this up a little bit. Oh, here we go, sorry. I feel a burning. You okay? So generally, I want to see that flub up like that, so I want to make sure that I have good freezing underneath it. Now the other issue here, the argument becomes, you know, why bother biopsying it? Why not just take it all off? Um, one, if it's a squamous cell cancer, it may require more advanced removal, and there's something called a Mohs surgery that they oftentimes do with this, and they can do that for basal cell cancer as well. The other reason being is basal cell cancers, um, if you take it off and you and it heals nicely, a lot of times we don't have to do a lot extra with that. I'm assuming that it's actually cleared. So, any pain there? No. So again, this is number 15 blade. So essentially, I just want to do a very superficial shave, just like this. Now I'm just going to take the hypercator, and this will be set a little bit higher. I'm going to set this to 11. You okay there? Yeah, no problem. Here, this is a little bit friable. So up here, that's that's relatively normal. We would see when it kind of emulsifies. Like you're getting through there. That's what we sometimes get with uh, either viral tissue or or just plastic tissue. It's kind of eroding like that. I get an accumulation on the actual probe itself. So I'll just clean this up a little bit. So again, I want to do this because if I can just scrape off as much cancerous tissue as possible, the whole debate becomes when this comes back, if it comes back basal cell and this whole area looks clean, do we do anything extra beyond that? And then we'll have to sort of see what that looks like. That's not hurting at all? No, I'm good. So now I'll just turn this down a little bit. 
and if you've never used a hypercator before, um, it can't be too, if there's too much fluid underneath it, it won't conduct the electricity. So if it's too wet, it won't work. So you have to make sure, that's why you sometimes see me putting pressure on it, and then I, right when I'm beyond it, then I actually uh, apply it. Because if I let it accumulate too much, uh, it's not going to do enough for me. Maybe here. Uh, it's still working. I'll have to show you on the next one. If it's bleeding too much, it just the uh, cautery won't take. So again, while this looks a little bit unsightly, these areas actually heal quite nicely. Um, so this scab will fall off over the course of the next, uh, you know, probably two, three weeks, something like that. And then by then we'll have the pathology report and then we can move forward with that. All right, that's good.